Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson on my show, Author to Author. Today, I'm here with John Aquaviva, and he has written a book called Improving Your Kids' Body Image. <clears throat> Before we begin the interview, let's open with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy will, thy will be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Sure. So, um, what is it that led you to write this? It's a follow-up to my first effort. The first book I wrote, uh, I have three now. This is the second one, the one that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It was simply for the young Catholic. It's called Improving Your Body Image Through Catholic Teaching. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking with several parents after I wrote this book. And they said, well, I wish I would have known what's in this book when my daughter was younger. So I could have implemented some of these concepts, some of these theories, some of these practices to keep mm -hmm our kids' body image at a higher level or, or get it to a higher level. Mm -hmm. And so all they did was the, I, I followed through on what they said. And so I, I thought, you know, the best way to, to address a poor body image or to improve somebody's body image is to start at a younger age. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of parents out there who feel helpless, even if they're Catholic, even if they're practicing Christians, they feel helpless watching their child and it's mostly uh it's young girls who suffer from the lowest body image uh, mm -hmm. issues and and so therefore i set out and i said okay what are some of the practical pieces that i could put together to help the parent the mom and the dad as they're raising their kids and most of it is practice is, is practical common sense teaching but the book title to kind of get people in is improving your kids' body image through Catholic teaching. And I use teachings of theology of the body and scripture and the catechism. And I wrap them all in this basic practical conversation of let's try to get us and our kids to see the human body as a gift and not something that has to be perfected. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wish someone had told my parents that. <laughs> <laughs> So you can relate. And yeah. Cynthia, whatever struggles that you've had in your life, uh, m many people do. But my guess is because of your faith and because of maybe some practical, like, um, you know, things that you put into place and also just wisdom with getting older, mm -hmm. um, put, put it into perspective and it was more manageable. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and you're probably like a lot of people, Cynthia, you have kind of embraced the the faith in a more deeper and, and longing way than you did when you were 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And the more you embrace Catholicism, the more you embrace the, the, the teachings of our Lord, the more that stuff like body image takes a back seat. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the gifts of life is age and wisdom but also it's just natural i think to put focus on other practical matters in your life than trying to attract another or trying to be the best looking one in the room or whatever the case is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah i um i was born deformed um, Were you? yeah my face uh looked more like a chimpanzee than a human and um, I had uh, 
too. I'm trying to think. I think my, my mother had tried to abort me chemically, and I think that that's what had gone wrong back in 1949. So I think it, uh, I think that's what kind of uh, messed up my face. So when I was, uh, you know, when I was on my own, um, I paid, I had uh, facial reconstruction twice. Wow. Yeah. Boy, that's big. That, that's a big thing to share with this audience. It's a big thing to share with me. I, I'm sorry you went through that. And that's a whole different level, right? Because you're just talking about, you're not talking about some imperfection. You're talking about some deformity, which is oh, yeah. at, at yeah. a much, it's a mm -hmm. much greater challenge for mm -hmm. many, many people, most people, even if they're faithful. Yeah. Yeah. They slice through my uh, jaw this way, both sides pulled my face out the structure out and then moved it to the left wow <laughs> let me tell you when i think back over my life i think what was the worst thing i ever went through that was it <laughs> that was it oh yeah i, I can yeah. imagine well yeah, you probably had, went through so much yeah yeah but anyway i look somewhat normal <laughs> no absolutely no i i absolutely yeah. thank god Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I had had knowledge about body image, um, you know, at that point, uh, you know, I, I probably would not have um, been hurt by so many kids just, you know, just making fun of me, uh, that sort of thing. M maybe not. But th this is why I wrote the book, Cynthia, is because kids often don't have the tools. They have to be given the tools, right? Like. Mm -hmm. The catechism, for instance, says the parents are the first and foremost teachers of the faith. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of the teachings of the church, a lot of the catechism, when you read it, it's practical, right? It's not these deep theological issues that the average person can't understand. They're, it's all sacramental based and it's prayer based and so forth. And when you combine those two things, right, the sacraments and in particular the Eucharist and prayer, and and this discussion along with those two things of of teaching children that that birth is a gift that being embodied is a gift mm -hmm. and, and being able to do all these physical things that everything from helping other people to doing something that we enjoy like walking our dog or throwing a ball to our son or playing sports ourselves and competing and trying and creating and the list goes on and on. And mm -hmm. the parent to the deformed child or to the not as ch talented child, but even to the ones that are beautiful people and really skilled, there's two things that should be done. And one is that it should be, there should be this language that the parent develops with that child for that child that this is all a gift. God has given you these this beauty. God has given you this this talent. But foremost, God has given you an opportunity at salvation just because you were born. And mm -hmm. that's why the ultimate question is, right? Mm -hmm. Why are we here? God, what do you want from me? And mm -hmm. he, he, it's, the answer is never going to be to hit more home runs or to make more money. It's never going to be that. It's going to be serve me in the way that feeds you, right? That's why we want a vocation. That's why vocation is important. That's why what we do for our careers, whether it's a stay-at-home mom or a, being a teacher or being an artist, whatever, we serve others through that. And when we view our job, what we do as a father, a mother, a grandparent, a tool to serve God and to please God, our outlook changes. And when our outlook changes, then it starts to fade, at least a little bit, it starts to fade of this problem that we have with this imperfect physical body that we've been given. And age mm -hmm. does this, right? We all know that. It's mm -hmm. just, it never stops, right? It, it, we get one more freckle, we get one more wrinkle, we lose one another hair, it, uh, hair turns gray. Um, it, it just, it never stops, right? That's mm -hmm. the irony of life, Cynthia. Think about how many 
boys and girls. They can't wait to be 20 or 22. And then once they're 25 or 26, they, they wish they're back to 20 again because they start to get wrinkles. And they start to lose their hair, whatever the yep. case is. It's such a funny thing. And that window is so small of people thinking that there's going to be true contentment or peace. But the fact is there's never peace, right? What did St. Augustine said? You will never have peace. Peace will never be attained until your heart rests with God. Right. And that is the theme of theology of the body. That is the mm -hmm. theme of my first book, Improving Your Body Image Through Catholic Teaching. This is the Improving Your Kid's Body Image Through Catholic Teaching. It's to embrace, to know this basic language of you have been given something. It is not made for perfection. It is made to serve. It is made right. to serve one another in relationships. It's made to serve mm -hmm. As parents and, and families, it's made to serve in, in our vocation of our job, and volunteering, whatever the case is. That's how we please God. And that's how doing those things, Cynthia, is how we start to see our body as a gift and not something, again, to perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty insightful. The it, way took a, it took a long time to develop that language it really did it's it's mm -hmm. it's something that's acquired and i'm not a theologian um i studied theology and philosophy for a couple years in the seminary um a few years ago um but god kicked me out of the seminary i got married and i have children now and i want what's best for my children and the main thing that i want for them is not money is not mm -hmm. this high level of skill. They're all athletes. All five of my kids are athletic. It's to know God and to serve God and to find out what God wants of them and everything that they do in their relationships and their sports and their schooling and mm -hmm. whatever the case is. And so I've developed this language further as a parent because I want to practice what I write in these books. And that is I, I want to, pass this on to them because Cynthia there's a spectrum almost everybody has some body concerns and when I say body concerns body image issues it's everything from head to the toe it's not just your actual body when we think of the body we tend to think of like below the neck right but it's everything mm -hmm. our face uh, our teeth everything how we see ourselves it's our the image in which we see ourselves and there's a spectrum basically of of this negative body image and on one end of the spectrum it's somewhat of a distraction so in other words it's not a really bad body image there's not much body distortion but on the other end of the spectrum cynthia there's it's it's downright paralyzing to people they can't function their thoughts are constantly on mm -hmm. improvement doing something better for their face for their body buying this product um looking at magazines and and reading articles on how to get how to get prettier and how to get my hair thicker and all of that. And we spend so much time and effort. And gee whiz, if we just spent 15 minutes a day on contemplating what God wants for us, it would ease that pain so much of the body distortion that so many people have. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I imagine that uh, all of us see our faults. And, of course, we magnify them. And so, yeah, that, that really is something that needs to be, you know, addressed by people. They need to learn how to put things back in proportion. That's right. And I think our faith does that. That's what my faith has done for me. And that's really what I try to get through in the books that I wrote. By the way, I mentioned three, just a small plug for it. It just came out last week. It's called Improving your sportsmanship through Catholic teaching. So I'm using this kind of the same theme to just, mm -hmm. just address this from a practical manner, but yet keep it very Catholic. And mm -hmm. yes, there's everybody, everybody struggles with this, it, this issue of, of uh, body image. But I, I truly believe that there's a strong correlation between our faith life and our body image. But also, are we purposeful in what we do? You've heard this, Cynthia. Many people have heard this wonderful saying, it's, but it's, 
it's, it's even though it's really simple, and that is uh, the the devil's workshop is idle time. Yeah. Right. And when we are are kind of complacent, when we're being lazy, when we don't have much going on, when we don't have a purpose, even for the day, we can turn our attention to things that are not good for us. And mm -hmm. one of the things that young people do is they go to social media. And Cynthia, you're probably more on top of this than I am. I'm not very good with social media, but I do know enough about it to write about it. But whether it's TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or X, Twitter, wh whatever it is, this is a great distraction to people. And mm -hmm. one of the things that young people do is not only go there and waste valuable time and, and senseless, mindless images, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they tend to look up and see over and again images of people that are beautiful. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about mm -hmm. it. When we turn on like a um, uh, not just a TV show, but these reality shows, mm -hmm. many of these people are chosen for because they're pretty in their face, they're pretty in their body or both. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the ways that the producers and the director get people to switch on that channel and to watch that show. It's what's called clickbait, right? We've all heard that mm -hmm. term. Mm -hmm. And what it causes, Cynthia, is this term. It's, it's a fancy name, but it's re really easily relatable. And it's called the social comparison theory. And what the social comparison theory states is the more you look at images of other people, especially when they're pretty, when they're beautiful, when they're young, when they're fit, when they have, you know, whether they've had surgery or not, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. We tend to spend more time thinking about not only that person, we tend to compare ourselves with those people. Mm -hmm. Yes. That heads us down this road of either frustration or misery, right? There's a spectrum. Some people just get a little frustrated. Some people are just downright miserable. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I would suggest to any parent listening is weekly even daily to to encourage or force your child to get off and i and every young person watching is get off the tv get off the internet get off social media and not only get away from that stuff that can cause the social comparison theory right this thing that happens in our head where we compare the, ourselves to the images that we just saw but turn towards scripture Turn toward a movie or a show that is spiritually uplifting, like The Chosen or Jesus of Nazareth or multiple. You know, there's literally thousands and thousands of TV shows and movies that are spiritually uplifting that would not take you down this track. And further, it would reverse this because you would start to see this, this ever necessary message of, that is not why you're here. You're not here for perfection. You're not here to constantly attract another. That's not why God put you. If you're beautiful, if you have a wonderful body, if you have a great face, thank God for that. That's wonderful. We need to appreciate that. I think it's a gift from God. But even the people that are that way, they're highly distracted by these other things. Cynthia, so, yeah, there's a point I want to make before I forget. I thought, I think you're going to find this fascinating. I was absolutely fascinated by this, despite everything that I teach about and write about and so forth. In general, Cynthia, because of the, the, the COVID virus, right, and the shutdown of our communities and the shutdown, people not going to work and so forth, would you think, of every, because of everything said, that body image issues were suppressed? In other words, they got better? Or do you think they got worse as a result of COVID? What would your natural, what would your instinct say? That it got worse or it got better? Remember, we're, we're mm -hmm. um, not being around people as much. Uh, some people are staying home. They didn't have to go out. They didn't have to get dressed up. They didn't have to make up. I think a lot of people stopped working out. 
there mm -hmm. was more drinking that occurred as a result of it and so forth. Mm -hmm. Do you think ultimately body image improved or it got worse? What's I'd hope it got better because, <laughs> you Go know, they're, out, they're not out there looking at other people and all that sort of right. stuff. That's right. That's what I would have thought too. And you know who it was the worst for? Young people. You know why? Because of what we're doing right now. Zoom. My yeah. kids and you and your probably people that you know, uh, if they have young kids, that's how they learn. In fact, mm -hmm. it was highly problematic for, for households that did not have multiple that did not have multiple computers. Mm -hmm. We have five kids, and at one time, four of them were learning on computers. Mm -hmm. And we had to scramble to borrow and beg and buy other mm -hmm. computers. We have two in our house, but we needed four. And we literally had to beg and borrow to get those. And the what they all did, Cynthia, they were on Zoom. And what do we tend to do if there's a bunch of pictures? We compare ourselves to the people that are there. And we mm -hmm. tend to look at ourselves and go, the lighting's not real good. I, my shirt's not bright enough. I, my my jacket doesn't look good. My teeth don't look white. Whatever they, And then we get more critical of ourselves. And it was awful for the young person, all these Zoom meetings and all these Zoom classes. Isn't that interesting? It is, yeah. But it makes sense probably, right? Yeah, when you look at it that way, it does. Yeah. Hmm. Can can I offer some practical advice for the sure. parent? Mm -hmm. So it's some of it's going to be a repeat, and this is right. It, I, I forgot exactly how long the book is. I don't have a, actually a copy right in front of me. You could tell me, but it's more than a hundred pages. So this is certainly not everything that's in the book. And please don't see it as Oh, no, I know everything uh, he just told us. And I, this is not my way of getting people to buy the book. It's just that there's far more to this than what we're going to say. But some of the practical advice that I can share with any parent, especially with a young girl or boy that you might think or you actually know they're struggling with body image, is one, do something. Be creative as a parent or just be downright parental and limit screen time. Mm -hmm. Social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, limit that. If you can limit that, that's going to be a gift for that young person. The other thing that I would strongly encourage is that you pray for your child. You pray for your grandchild, you, whoever it is that's struggling, you pray for them directly to God and you tell God exactly what you would like to see them be healed from. But also encourage them to pray on it. And further, and I think I mentioned this earlier, and, and I apologize for the repeat, but if you took 15 minutes off of social media time, let's say a person's on social media for an hour and a half a day, which is probably a low number, right? But if you just pulled a half hour from that or 20 minutes from that and turn that time that you're not on there to prayer i think it's going to do two things i think it's going to heal your soul and two i think it might very well keep you from going on again right after that and it might help you stay off it because you're like boy my soul just take a inventory of your soul cynthia mm -hmm. my suggestion is those parents and tell those kids pray and tell me how you feel afterwards how on earth is it going to be that they don't feel better about themselves? Even if just saying the rosary or meditating on a verse from scripture, doing something, reading some writings by one of the great saints, whatever. I can't imagine that that wouldn't put them down a different road and a road of healing. The other thing that I'll leave, at least with the basic suggestions, uh, or practical advice is volunteer as a family. If you volunteer, Cynthia, if you and, and uh, we do this, I don't think we do it enough, but we do do it and we do it regularly. And our kids serve other people and they're often homeless 
or they're down and out folks that just need some love. They need some assistance physically and so forth. And with material things, I should say. But once you volunteer, think about the power of this, Cynthia. When you volunteer, you are demonstrating to yourself and to others that this is one of the purposes of our bodies. And once you demonstrate that to yourself, you start to see your body in a different way. Through volunteering, we start to we serve God physically. We serve God with these great hands, with these the legs and feet that he gave us, the strength that he gave us, the energy that he gave us to serve these other people. And again, what it does, just like this other thing about getting yourself off of social media and so forth, if you get yourself off your own life and your own focus and put it on other people, it puts a new perspective on your life. And that's why I think so many like Catholic high schools in the nation have done something really good that I wasn't part of. Cynthia, did you go to Catholic high school? No, I wasn't Catholic until I was in my 30s. Oh, no kidding. Well, God bless you for saying yes to that. Mm -hmm. I was a Catholic high school kid, but we didn't do any volunteering. And I, I've heard of several high schools. That's part of the graduation requirement. Like you cannot go to the next grade in, unless you have so many hours in of volunteering. And is this a... Are, are Catholic school kids in high school the best kids on the block? Are they the most wonderful giving people in our culture? Uh, that's, that's That can be argued. But the point is that those Catholic high schools, the superintendent of those schools, the bishop of that diocese, it has it right. This is how you serve our Lord, is by serving others with that young, energetic, strong body that you've been given. Yeah, it's not it that isn't just for young people i no uh, of course yeah i um i volunteer i crochet i i've been doing that my whole life i crochet awesome. um doll clothes american girl doll clothes okay. uh, yeah and i get a whole stack of them and i donate them to the uh rutland i live in vermont the rutland uh fair the vermont fair there and yeah. they have organization that takes people's you know if they have dolls or if they make doll clothes or sew them or crochet them knit them they give them to poor little girls that have no no way of getting anything that is that is such a you know it really um i mean it's not like what you're talking about but the thing is volunteering and doing something for someone else when you see a little child that gets all excited because they've got a new new dress for a doll yeah. and they wouldn't get it you know it's like it it makes you want to just sit and crochet all day but no, that's, uh, that's a perfect example and it's just but it, and it does show that you don't have to be young to volunteer no. i was just using that as an example of oh i know but yes yeah. you are that, doing the same thing you're serving god through that that is yeah. that's awesome at the, and at I think the, it's necessary for our culture to be healthy. Yeah. It's the young age of 73 over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're all young, Cynthia. You tell them. You tell them. Yep. But, yeah. But I think that's an excellent point uh, that you're making about the volunteering. It's just, it's practical. And sometimes it's hard to do, especially if, like, let's say right now, parents or mom or dad are listening to this interview and their kid's 16 and they've never volunteered they never even discuss it boy would that be a difficult thing to introduce to that kid right they're like mm -hmm. what we're gonna do what and they would they would really balk at that and that's one of the reasons i talked to my wife felicia and i said from the time that our kids they're 13 through 2 at this point in age the five of them but we started a couple years ago and i still think that was too late we, we started doing it as a family. And one of the reasons it was tough for us to do it, is I always had all these monkeys and diapers. And it was so tough to get out of the house. But I, I do think it's a powerful tool and it's it, something certain to curtail any body issues, especially if they're serious. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good point. Mm hmm. Um, what other uh, advice would you give? 
you know, there's a there was a study that came out a couple of years ago that I thought was meaningful in this culture of sport. I think sport has gotten a bad name to a degree, right? Like this, and you probably are aware of this. And some some parents and grandparents are more aware of this than others, and it depends on the level of participation of people in their family and so forth. But sports has really, especially youth sport, has really gotten a bad name. And, and it's primarily because the parents, the umpires, and the coaches, not the children, but the adults in this situation are not very adult. But this study outside of that showed when it comes to body image that sports are a really positive thing. And it's going to really come back around to this, one of the concepts that I've already talked about. And that is when they assess the body image of athletes, young athletes, like say 15, 16 years old or 10 or 11 years old, and compared it to other people their same age that were mm-hmm. physically active, but they primarily exercised, mm-hmm. right? They were exercises, they're fitness people or they wanted to improve their fitness. They found that there was a noticeable difference, and the people, the young boys and girls that were active in sports had significantly higher body image than those who did not participate in sport and even than those who were into fitness. And the reason was this, that when they asked them why, like they asked them questions, they like, like, let's peel this back and see why these kids that are athletes have better body image. And it's this concept that I mentioned a few minutes ago. They see their body as a tool to do something, not just good, but to, but to be productive with it, like to, to shoot a ball in a basket or hit a baseball to the, over the left fielder's head or to hit the skate on, a, on ice where it's like that of a dancer, wh- whatever it is. And they each saw, at least as a whole, they saw their body as a tool to perform these skills that, that please teammates, that please themselves, that please the fans and so forth. And I thought that was so interesting. Whereas the exercisers, Cynthia, they saw their body as something to be more toned, more muscular. Mm-hmm. And, and, and actually, being an exercise physiologist, of course, I would never, ever downplay exercise. But I thought it was interesting when they compared exercisers only to athletes. The athletes had a better body image. And so I think that is something that the parent of a young child should, should keep in mind, even if the kid's not very skilled that to encourage them to participate in sports might very well Mm -hmm. improve their body image or keep it from getting bad. And Mm -hmm. I I think, I think there's a lot to be said about that. And I can tell you being a college teacher now for 23 years, Cynthia, the most confident women I meet are the every day are the athletes, Mm -hmm. The, the most confident women at, the levels, and I've taught at Division One, which is the highest level of athletes, right? They have a good chance of going pro in their respective sport. I've taught Division Two, which I'm at right now, and I've taught Division Three. And without question, the most confident people in my classes, at least outwardly, right, were the athletes. There was just mm-hmm. a certain level of confidence. And success does that, right? If, if you get a scholarship for soccer, that'll, that'll give you emotional confidence. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to get too far away from the original point of writing this book. That is, mm-hmm. God must be a part of it. And mm-hmm. and and we're, I, I sense we're coming to the conclusion of this conversation. And I'll leave you with this little story. A couple of years ago, I was reading a... Uh, my wife had some type of home and garden book, or I forgot what it was. It was a woman's book. Women's magazine, some you know, monthly or bi-monthly magazine. Mm-hmm. And it said, because they know most of their readers were women, and they had a two-page article 
on body image. It was kind of random. Mm -hmm. And they just made some practical suggestions to improve your body image to the women reader, right? To the woman reader. And Cynthia, I thought that some of the points were fantastic, mm -hmm. right? They're like, um, you know, get enough sleep and exercise and be active with your children. And it was just one point after the other that nobody would disagree. They're all good kind of points and suggestions. But after I read that story, because I had written these two books, I was, anytime I hear the word body image, I, my ears perk up and I go, what are you talking about? Right. But I realized at the end, it was remiss. It, it was missing something. And it was missing. There was no mention of God. There's no mention of the creator. There was no mention of all of all of his creation, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. His masterpiece is the mm -hmm. human body, is the human person. Right. And we are asked, I, I think God begs us to appreciate being embodied and appreciate what we've been given. Even though it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. He's he's asked us to appreciate and embrace and love. That body right. that we've been given, even though it's not perfect, that's not what it's meant for. It's meant to serve. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's meant for vocations, no doubt. Mm -hmm. yep. So I'll give you the final word, Ms. Tulin Wilson. <laughs> well, I think uh, you've got a lot of good thoughts there. Um. I do think it's important for people to volunteer. I think it's important for people who are physically capable uh, of doing some kind of uh, exercise and athletic sports. Uh, it's good right. for them, you know, because it, it also builds such, uh, you know, a, it builds a community, you know, and that's, that's important. Um, so, you know, I think, I think you're right on Mark, you know, you've, you know, so but uh when i think of uh i think of how many women who are basically women uh who are really attractive and then they go and they think they're not attractive enough and they have plastic surgery yeah to me yeah to me plastic surgery is for people who are born deformed you know yeah, I it's, agree with that. it's something that can help people that look like i looked and um and I'm very happy, you know, that, uh, I mean, I look pretty normal now. <laughs> Not exactly, but pretty normal. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, when you look good and you think you don't look good enough, there's something really wrong there. You know, if you're, if you're not deformed and you just decide, well, you know, I have, I have a line starting over here, so I've got to have a facelift or something, you right. know. Right. It's mutilation. It is. It's a strong word, but it's a it's a, an appropriate word. And mm -hmm. yes, some of the most damaged body image people with the most damaged body images, people that were had distorted body image, were some mm -hmm. of the most beautiful people I'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. They just yeah. wanted more and more. Right? It's. Mm -hmm. I remember talking to this guy one time, and he had a lot of money. Cynthia, he had a lot of money. And he said, it's never enough. And I said, this man needs God. That, yeah. That's my first thought. He mm -hmm. got millions of dollars and it's not enough, he said. Mm -hmm. And people that are beautiful, they go, they, I want more. I want to be even more beautiful. And I go, that's not what God's intention is. Those people need God. And I am so thankful for God. I am mm -hmm. so, I, I think it, it, I think without God, life doesn't make sense. And this is it. And I try to weave in enough of John Paul II's theology of the body in these two books I wrote about body image. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that's the message people need to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you're doing a, a good job. I, I thank mean, you. And I appreciate what you do for WCAT Radio uh, and In Root Media. And I appreciate being on the show today. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you came on. This is I great. This is something that can do people some good. You know? I appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, did you want to add anything, or um, how about?
buy both of those books. Not because it's going to make me any money, really. It doesn't. It, it really doesn't. People say that all the time. But if if you know somebody, folks, that struggles with a with body image, and they're a teenager, especially a young adult, the first book, Improving Your Body Image Through Catholic Teaching, or if you're a parent and you have a young child or you know developing child, like adolescent, and you want to keep their body image positive, this other mm -hmm. book, I I think it's. I think it, it has some helpful tips in there for you folks. So, and I pray and I promise this, that I'll pray for all the listeners on this day that the word of God is strong in their heart and in their head and that they become more faithful to his teaching. Mm. That's good. I promise to pray on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so given that, um, I'll close with prayer. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of oh. grace. Lord. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray Amen. for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, well, thank you very much, John. That was an uh, excellent interview, and I think it'll probably have some very positive effects. I appreciate so, that. You have yep. a good night, Cynthia, and we'll talk soon, I hope. Okay, you take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.